welcome to capsule international relations capsule for the shankar ias academy today our topic is the latest developments in pakistan i am sure many of you must have been following the developments after a turmoil which lasted several months an election was held on february 8th for the 16th national assembly of pakistan and sometimes you may wonder why pakistan has elections because whichever party comes to power and who are controls the government the party is always controlled by the army the joke is about every other country has an army but pakistan army has a country so that has been the tradition and even when there are democratically elected prime ministers and presidents it is always the army which controls matters and if things things go out of control the army declares martial law and takes over the country and this has happened in history several times contrary to the traditions in india where we have had democracy continuously and there has never been any attempt by the army to uh, play politics so pakistan's uh, whole uh, history shows that uh, they maintain a kind of democratic face but in actual fact it is the army which rules the country and this is also the reason why whoever becomes prime minister the policy of the pakistan government remains firm which is anti india policy their core interest is to get kashmir back because they think that we had uh, taken kashmir by military force and uh, many politicians have come up with different ideas but once they come to power they have to follow the army's instructions and that has been the uh, tradition there so now what has happened is uh, you know possibly that it was imran khan the famous cricketer who was the prime minister originally when he contested for elections he only got two seats in his party which is called pakistan tehreek e insaf pti that is a party for political justice it was established by imran khan and in the first election he got only two seats in the parliament and then he realized that his cricket popularity was not good enough for him to win elections and therefore he requested the support of the army and also the fundamentalists so imran khan who contested the second time was not the imran khan who was the you know prince charming of the cricket world with many friends in india kind of idealistic person but he had transformed himself into a an army uh you know born in the hands of the army and also the terrorists and fundamentalists and he started speaking a language which is not very different from its predecessors about india india was criticized by him several times that india is not democratic enough and uh, india is pressurizing pakistan to do the uh in a way in a impossible things and pakistan uh, will continue to uh, demand Uh, the plebiscite uh, in kashmir and possibly uh, handing over kashmir valley to pakistan that has been the policy and he himself uh, accepted that policy and that is how he got elected and after some time he fell out of the army apparently at the time of the war in ukraine he visited russia just before the war and was a guest of putin which the army did not like and from there they had started a different opinion and finally army saw to it that uh, he was arrested he had to resign from the prime minister's post he was arrested and jailed even assassination attempts were made against him and uh, his party was banned and uh, he is still in jail but when the elections came he did not contest or his party could not contest but a large number of supporters of pti that is his political party won the elections in fact uh, if you look at the figures you will find that uh, the though uh, imran khan himself did not contest 
and his own party did not contest between him and the other party of the Bhutto's party, PPP. Between these two parties, they had a majority. And uh, this was unexpected because they thought that since Imran Khan was in jail, there was no chance of his uh, being able to come out and win the elections. The army would not have allowed it. Uh, but um, in between, of course, you know about uh, Nawaz Sharif, who was prime minister twice. And when the election was declared, it was his brother, um, Shabazz Sharif, who was the prime minister. And um, elections were held under leadership. And at that time, the expectation was that Mr. Nawaz, Nawaz Sharif was required to run the country in this difficult situation. And so he was pardoned. He was originally uh, disqualified, but the Supreme Court pardoned him and allowed him to come back and contest the elections. So the Nawaz Sharif contested in two constituencies. He won in one constituency and lost in the other. So he lost a bit of his credibility. But his still his party, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz, won a number of number of seats. Uh, Pakistan Muslim League had about 75 seats. And um, Imran Khan's party had uh, 103, including 93 uh, candidates from the from his party. Then there were other than People's Party, that is Bhutto's party, got uh, 54 votes. And then larger other parties also got some seats. And um, in the end, what happened was that no single party emerged as victorious. Even though Nawaz Sharif's party, if you take it as a single party, had more seats, but in, the, in all the combinations that worked out, eventually Nawaz, Nawaz Sharif decided not to be a candidate for the prime minister and nominated his brother. And uh, on uh, 13th of February, the the Pakistan People's Party and the PPP, that means Nawaz Sharif's party and Bhutto's party, uh, decided to create a coalition and uh, form a government. But this has not happened. This has not happened yet because there are very disturbing factors. Other parties are not cooperating. They don't have sufficient majority. And even if the coalition is formed somehow with these two parties, the popularity of Imran Khan is so much and the anger against the army is so much that they were not sure that they could hold a government for a long time. So everybody is waiting, hoping that uh, a government might be formed with maybe Nawaz Sharif's party plus Bhutto's party plus a smaller group. And at the same time, Imran Khan and his party and uh, his supporters could make another group. And therefore, there is really clearly no majority in, in the assembly. So this is the situation today. And uh, lots of discussions are taking place, trying to form a coalition. Uh, but it will have to be basically between Nawaz Sharif and Bhutto. Because if these two parties are put together, they are experienced parties. And the um, army seems to like both of them. And uh, therefore, everybody believes that this would be the final compromise with, uh, 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 with the, with the Nawaz Sharif's uh, brother as the Prime Minister. But as of today, this has not happened. And therefore, we have to wait and see what kind of government will be formed in Pakistan. Of course, Pakistan is not its own master. It has very close relationship with China. It has had, of course, the closest of relations with the United States, but that has been diluted since the time of Trump, because he stopped funding the uh, Pakistan government in the name of terrorism. And uh, therefore, Americans, particularly after Afghanistan, they had to leave, and they are showing less interest in Pakistan. But at the same time, they, keep, they are keeping an eye. And uh, the army is not acting. The army is not taking over power because the Americans are advising them that uh, the Pakistani economic situation is uh, in a very sad state. And they need the support of the IMF and the World Bank 
And if you need the IMF and World Bank support, then you need army on your on your side. But at the same time, not have a military government. Because Americans will always want a democratic front in order to support governments. Dictatorships they are not supposed to support. But if there is a democratic looking prime minister, they can do so. So therefore, army will not take over. And it will be at least initial stages next couple of months. It will be um, Sharif, that is the brother Sharif, and uh, Bhutto, that is um, Sardari, is uh, also in power together with uh, Sardari and his uh, son Bilawal Bhutto. They have considerable strength. And um, so this is likely to be the, the form for formula after the um, elections. But the most important thing is the party which has lost is the, is the army. Because never has army been hated so much as in these last few months before the elections. And therefore, they will not take any action in order to stop the democratic process. And um, so people say other political parties may not have won, but the army has lost. But at the same time, army may allow anybody to become form a government, but they will strictly control the economy. They will strictly control the politics. They will particularly control their policy towards India. So you cannot expect much from all this. The Chinese are keeping a very close eye. And the Chinese are, of course, the closest friends of Pakistan these days. They are in the in the Belt and Road Initiative. A huge sum of money has been allocated for Pakistan in the Belt and Road Initiative. But they have realized that it, what, like it happened in Sri Lanka, Pakistan might also get into a debt trap. So they are a bit careful with China. China, of course, China's interest is basically to see that India and Pakistan do not normalize relations. Because their interest is to see that Pakistan is a, is a pain for India continuously so that uh, China can dominate Asia and even control Asia if possible. So, in, in, as far as India is concerned, uh, we have concern about the army coming back. We may have concern about some individuals who have been prejudicial to India. But we are keeping very quiet. And we, like China, say that um, you know, we do not interfere in the internal affairs of um, other countries. So they interfere all the time, but they say they don't do that. And therefore, China is very interested. Um, United States is interested. India's interest is in stability of Pakistan. Uh, Russia is, of course, too busy fighting the war. And uh, Iran has had some trouble with Pakistan at one stage, but they seem to have normalized it. So generally, the external atmosphere is quite stable. There is no real problem. And therefore, a coalition may come about and the army may stay back. But eventually, this will not be the formula which will be worthwhile. Because there could be other communists. There are about five or six political parties who may join any side because they don't believe in any principles. The only Principles that they have, principles that they have is to be anti-India. So, as usual, it is a chaotic situation in Pakistan. But the more chaotic it is, the worse for us because all kinds of external forces will intervene. And uh, internally, there could be problems in Balochistan, there could be problems in other parts of uh, Pakistan. And uh, economic situation being so bad, people say it is a basket case in the sense that they cannot survive without Western assistance. So since the government of US assistance is not there, and still they want to keep the uh, democratic phase go on, go on uh, naturally they will not do anything at this point in time. But everybody is watching and wondering whether Pakistan's transition to democracy will be effective and whether Imran Khan will continue to hold power for some time and what will happen to him because of his court cases and others, whether he'll continue, whether the other smaller parties will support him. All this that happens in Pakistan after an election. And this is the difference between India and Pakistan. Our elections are maybe uh, violent, 
maybe not democratic in certain booths and constituencies, but basically nobody challenges the Indian election process. But in the case of uh, uh, Pakistan, the most recent news is that somebody, uh, an election commissioner of one of the provinces, openly admitted on tele live television that he rigged the polls. He made sure that Imran Khan's party did not win in crucial provinces, like Punjab. Punjab is the most important province, and whoever is chief minister in Punjab generally becomes prime minister of Pakistan. And therefore, the majority there has, um, has gone to uh, Nawaz Sharif and Bhutto's party, in which case Nawaz Sharif's daughter would be the chief minister in Punjab. The Punjab chief minister is a very powerful person, and uh, PPP has considerable influence there. So Nawaz Sharif probably sees his daughter as his successor, and that may be also in the office. So as far as India is concerned, we have no concern at the moment of major, uh, major conflict in uh, Pakistan. But in an extreme case, when the army feels that they are losing control, it is quite possible that the army may take over, in which case they will have to have a justification for it, and they may point their fingers at India and say that we took over because otherwise India would have taken over Pakistan. And with that uh, kind of uh, fear instilled in the people, they may be able to do something. And they may say that something has happened in the border. They can instigate a problem there and uh, create a confusing situation where they will ask the people to rally around Pakistan in order to deal with India. So India is not particularly safe in the situation. But as of now, just as we... Uh, are not party to any of this. We have, Nawaz Sharif had a good relationship with India, but at the time of Kargil, he misled us. In fact, he was aware that the Pakistani army was invading Kargil, while he was saying he did not know anything about it. But later, the truth came out. And also in 1999, when Clinton invited Nawaz Sharif to Washington to ask him to leave Kargil, uh, it is true that we fought the battle very well and won the war, but it was President Clinton who forced Nawaz Sharif uh, to uh, withdraw from the line of control. So on a on a July 4th, the National Day of the uh, United States, Clinton spent a whole day with Nawaz Sharif, insisting that Pakistan should withdraw from the line of control. And finally, Nawaz Sharif told him that, yes, I'll do that, provided you will uh, mediate between India and Pakistan in the Kashmir issue. So that, Clinton knows it is a non-starter. So he did not agree to that. But in the final communique, a reference was made to the fact that President Clinton will now make his best efforts in order to bring about reconciliation between India and Pakistan. And that is not serious. It was just a, just a formality. So. Sharif used that excuse to say, okay, we are withdrawing and Clinton has promised to sort out this issue with India. But that was just an eyewash. So there was nothing in it. Clinton did not do anything and uh, things went on you know, with the uh, Pakistani army out of Kargil. So these are all the various ramifications of the present situation. When it comes to Pakistan, it is never clear. It's always confused. The army is always there. Americans and the Chinese put a lot of pressure. And to all this, the government, whatever government comes to power, will have to win the favor of the army, the Americans, and the Chinese in order to survive in Pakistan. So it's not good news. Democratic elections have not brought a clear result. And all the parties which were in action earlier will continue to be in play, and then we may expect some unexpected changes in Pakistan. Thank you.